One take one. <laughs> you, I hate when I have to edit around the intro because you hit roll like. Daddy Shane said it looked good. <sighs> but did I look good? I don't know, man. I think we got to give up on that. And now, well. That train has left the station. Yeah, I know. You're wearing a shirt with holes in it from a, a knife fight in 2013. Here we go. Look at this. I'm wearing my my match made in heaven shirt that I got from my best friend, Katie. It's wearing out, but it's almost cuter worn out than I think it would have been when it was new. So Yeah. Well. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, everyone. What? Oh, yeah. Welcome back uh, to another, another episode, episode of, of The Sip. Sip. I'm Ryan Adams, of course, joined by Lizzie Gordon. Hello. Hi. What is up with you? I'm a mess of rage. Uh, yeah. So, why don't you break it down for us? Well, I'm warm. First of all, I'm warm and I'm drinking warm tea, so I'm only going to get warmer. These I'm, all sound like self inflicted problems. They all are self inflicted problems. That's the worst part. I can't get away from myself. I leave. <laughs> I'm just always there, wherever I am, fucking my own shit up. And it's enough is enough. I'm done. Can you explain the scooter you trolled in with today? <laughs> trolled in. Okay, so strolled. you know when I come to Burbank, I park at the stage and I walk. Mm -hmm. So if I, I, I thought, oh, I'll get a scooter. <laughs> so I got a scooter. Hot pink, by the way. It's all they had. Sure. That was the only choice I had. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I scoot in there. Scooting's hard in your 30s. <laughs> Let me just tell you guys, it's not what She's it used to be. She's classic Razor scooter. It's a pink Razor scooter. It's everything. Mm -hmm. uh, I will not be doing it again. Well, yeah. Did you not think about going through security, about hauling well, none it of on that's the airplane? The problem. It's very light. None of that's the problem? No, none of that's the problem. It's very light. Riley, if you're going to join this podcast, you need to do it civilized. Come on. Riley's looking like she wants to fuck some shit up. Get up here, Riley. Don't move the camera. Don't move the camera, Riley. Here, you need to very safely finesse your way it's up. The, don't put the well, holder by the ears, I'm, bro. Hey, don't act like I'm doing something wrong. Come on. Jesus. Okay. Sit, Poor sit, thing. Sit, sit. She's just trying to live her life. Oh, no. I'm entangled. Oh, Riley. Anyways, the burden of the scooter is in the writing of it as a person who's full grown. Those are not made for full size adults. Did you know that? Um, I, I had to create. I had to like hunch over it to reach the handlebars, and then I had to keep my left leg in a constant squat position to get low enough. And then before you know it, your legs burn. And like I work out, but my leg was like burning. <laughs> I had to keep getting off and walking. It hurt. It hurt. It burnt. So. I'm more concerned about the faces you got at the airport. Like, how were people observing you? I got no faces at the airport. There's no way that you got no faces A TSA carrying. guy was like, tell me you rode this down the hall. And I was like, I didn't write it down the hall because I'm not an asshole. I mean, if you have it, utilize it. Why would I write it in, an, in a busy airport? I, uh, I myself, Lizzie, a, klutz, a klutzy McGoverns, which is a word that people call. It's a name. A klutzy McGoverns. Out You've heard it. We've all heard it. We've all heard klutzy McGoverns. <laughs> out of all the unaware like self unaware gosh i can't even think out of all of the do things you want that some you matcha do tea? i brought it from home <laughs> <laughs> i just can't believe that's your line like riding the scooter that you rode to the airport in the airport is well, your the airport social was line bonkers it was like it was like retirement community vacation day mm, it would be nice they're all end of summer so is labor day the end of summer yes i know but like is it actually i mean not for us does it just sig <laughs> does it sig we choose when our summer ends no, here i want to know is it i like, don't know just fall it's the start? end of wearing white you can't wear white after labor day okay those are fake rules they're not fake rules they're fake rules loser I want to know when does fall actually start? I think, or is today, Labor Day just made well, up to close the pools down when it's still ninety-five degrees outside? I mean, they've already released the pumpkin spice latte, so it might be fall. I feel like Starbucks has to get an early cash in. Anyways, that's not the point. Lizzie gets here and she goes, "What's going on? It's disgusting here." It is. And I said, "What are you? My TikTok for you page?" <laughs> what? <laughs> Did they say that about you? Like no. people are commenting on your shit that you're disgusting. <laughs> Is that what you mean? No, so I'm dabbling on TikTok again. Right. I'm trying to consume to become a TikTok star. I, I don't even I'm I'm on the fence of if, if I even want to become a TikTok <laughs> star. The intensity of your TikToks <laughs> is like palpable. It's like an intenseness that I have never seen. I left no crumbs. Wow. <laughs> He's speaking TikTok now too. That's what I've learned. Did you eat it That's up? That's what I've learned. I, I ate left no crumbs. I ate 
and I left no crumbs is what people are, uh, I've learned this week. That's what TikTok has taught me. And it further Do proves. Do you guys remember when he used to just fucking shit on me oh, all day? I don't think you've let me finish. Oh. I, I haven't come to conclusion. Is an amends coming? Uh, no. Oh, I still okay, fucking hate yeah. TikTok. Oh Even if I'm the biggest TikTok. Well, if I'm the biggest TikToker on the platform, maybe I'll come around. But I don't think I ever will be. Right. So. My tick, it, I just find it very interesting, and I don't find TikTok enjoyable to watch. And mm. I am angry that it's taken over a lot of other, like it's become so mainstream that it's annoying to me. Yeah. And I was like, let me try, let me try my best to put myself inside and understand why people love mm -hmm. making TikTok, why people love consuming TikTok. And I guess maybe my for you page just isn't cultivated for me yet. Yeah. Because I hate it. Right. And half of the TikToks that are served on my For You page are people talking about the reasons they hate Colorado. And I'm like, why are you serving? Like, what? Why? Why would I? Because I live in Denver. You think this is what I want? And it's a lot of people. Like, yeah. there's like seven different people mm -hmm. making like things I hate, hate about it? Denver, Colorado. I couldn't even get through them because they're That's so. Because my TikTok For You page has a lot of like, you have to eat at this place in Denver, Colorado. Oh. Yeah. I wonder why mine's hateful and yours is. Do you hate it here? No, I like Colorado. Mm -hmm. I'm liking it more and more every day, honestly. Oh, good like, for you. I'm coming at, I'm, yeah, I really like it here right now. <laughs> right now. In this moment, I love it here. Once it starts getting cold, debatable. Debatable. Maybe I'll start loving it. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't ever think I'll be a I'm cold I'm excited for girl. it to get cold out here. Yeah, you missed the snow last year. I missed the snow last year, but I won't miss it this year because we will be making a Christmas movie. Yes, we will. We're manifesting the What's going it. on? I finished the first draft. Okay. And I bought the dog's snowsuits. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so it's happening. I started the rewrite today, yesterday, and I'll be working on it and delivering that tomorrow night. Okay. And then I'll probably send it to you. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited to read it. It's very funny. I've only had like small I, bits and pieces. I've read it out loud with a couple of people, and I have to tell you, I tickle myself to the core you've read the whole thing out loud like a vomit like this is my process okay i have a process i like to read my outlines out with sarah St out loud with sarah stretton and then okay. i like to read a draft out loud with my friend anna who gives really good notes so it's very sloppy it's like a vomit pass so we're gonna be on like v3 you'll be on v3 okay wow yeah. mm-hmm I don't know how much like great input I will be personally. Well, I think really this is the kind of script that comes to life in the room because I've tried to like capture our ridiculous banter. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I think more than anything, it's going to be about like on the day, just like irritating you a little bit. OK, but how do we get that across to whoever we're selling it to? They know. <laughs> they know? Yeah, they know. They've okay. seen the podcast. And oh, they... we have like a specific eye. Yeah, it's Adam. Uh, OK. <laughs> Hey, Adam. Hey, Adam. Hopefully he's not watching this. It's embarrassing. Because <laughs> well, I'm manifesting the up. fuck out of something that he hasn't totally greenlit yet, but I'm acting as if he has. Uh, okay. I mean, yeah, that's the way forward for sure. Absolutely. Uh, okay. Well, <laughs> hopefully we're filming that this... January. January. <laughs> and um, so on. back to my TikTok journey. Oh, right. Just we're still, for a second. We're still there? I'm sorry. Yeah, I thought it I, fell over to me. So I... <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to tell you a little bit about my process. Oh. I was trying to understand like what was so enjoyable about it, but I can't find anything quite honestly. Right. And so maybe that's why I'm not a good TikToker because mm. the TikToks that I enjoyed uh, making flopped so hard. Which I like, were those? wanted to die. Uh, they did good on Instagram Reels, though. Like, the ones that flopped on TikTok did good on Instagram what, Reels. Which ones are you talking so, about? So, like, my first one where I did, like, a Target vlog. Oh. Yeah, see? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I thought it was fun. If it was inside of a vlog, it would have been great. Yeah. But people have zero attention span. Another yeah. reason TikTok is like ruining the world because our intention are. <sighs> I mean, I already don't have an attention span. Mm. And now on a TikTok, if it goes longer than 15 seconds with no punch, I'm irritated. So I flopped really hard. And then I thought, wow, what is this? Because there's people that can do seemingly... I know a lot of people spend a lot of time on a lot of TikToks that mm -hmm. do go viral, but there's a lot, also a lot of TikToks that are seemingly nothing mm -hmm. that get 20 million views. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to rack my mind around it. Rap. So, yeah. And so I... <laughs> I'm rolling with the punches today. He's a changed man, a TikTok man. <laughs> and so... I just, I don't know. I had like a mini breakdown because I looked and I was like, wow. So You I, had a mini breakdown? So I started, shut up. 
<laughs> because my Riley one, the one of Riley chasing the hose, got 16,000 views in the first 24 hours. Yeah. Which means, hell yeah. No, that's. I don't know, man. So I don't know bad. 16, I don't know, man. If I have. I have like almost like nearly if you round up a million followers. Yes. I don't. Uh, nearly oh. 900,000 followers. Okay. 830. Right, math. Not that I know exactly. Numbers, numbers, numbers. And so that means that TikTok doesn't even push it to the people that are following me. Yeah. So it's all for you page based. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't understand. Oh, I don't either. And so I, I can s- barely, you started doing all those numbers and I just glazed okay. over. 830,000 followers on TikTok. My TikTok got 16,000 views. Numbers, numbers, numbers. Oh my gosh. You're I'm an with accountant. Me. <laughs> it flopped, 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 flopped. Yes. So I just didn't understand. So then I started filming a video like, oh, I'm going to try to like go viral mm-hmm. again on TikTok. Mm-hmm. I get a viral TikTok, in my opinion, like 1.2 million views. Like she's so famous. Who is she? She's so famous. <laughs> <laughs> And so I'm documenting the process yeah, 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 yeah. and I go to organize the footage yesterday. Uh-huh. YouTuber's worst nightmare. The whole intro where I'm having like the most insane breakdown about being a flop on TikTok is gone. That can't be recreated. The whole video is fucking ruined. Jesus. I'm so mad. I spent three hours trying to find the footage yeah. and then I realized I maybe deleted and recorded over it mm-hmm. while I, when my memory card ran out of space. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Damn. What a nightmare. That is honestly it is. Your meltdowns are the best. And I like Shane was I was like having such a meltdown and Shane was just making so much fun of me. That's what I filmed and it's gone. It doesn't exist. No, but you could film this meltdown now. (sighs) The lost the lost footage meltdown. And then I filmed the whole journey, but now I feel like without that intro, the whole video's a flop. Now I feel like my week was a flop because I don't even like TikTok. You gotta let that go. You could do just a sit down, talk to camera, listen, guys. She's flopping. And then here's what you do. You just lay on the floor and flop like a fish. You didn't want to experience. It. I'm t- listen to my solution because okay. it's great you want to go viral girl I don't know if I do I'm trying to figure out the point of TikTok because let me tell you I dove into the analytics of my 1.2 million views guess how much I made for 1.2 million views on TikTok $3 34 Ooh. that is why are people TikToking I don't know because they love it but I do <laughs> think race here's what I think we should do <laughs> coming from the guy who's told me not to do cameo because it'll seem like a cash grab i know i'm no i'm not a cash grab type of person unless it comes to tiktok in which case he's like where's the bags at no but i was curious to see like what a video that like i think if you're a million views is substantial yeah 34 dollars is nothing no for a lot yes yeah so i just think like the only people making money on TikTok have to be the Addison Rays that are p- pumping out 20 million views consistently. Mm-hmm. Which I know it's not all about money, but if it's just fascinating. Million, so what's 34 times 20? We're back to math. I'm an accountant. I tried doing that and I gave up. <laughs> <laughs> where do you work? At a place where accountants work. TikTok. We're doing it right now. I do want to do a thing where I film you flopping on the floor in a bunch of different locations and we just cut it. So it we will do it. Don't worry. Okay. It'll be great. Here's what I've decided. Oh, my God. If inspiration hits and it's fun, (laughs) then I'll do the TikTok. But I don't think I want to fully immerse myself inside of TikTok. It has nothing to do with money, honestly. It's just like, I try. And when I don't watch, it feels pretty fraudulent. Well, the amount of effort you people are putting in is, like, way too much. (sighs) And that's, like, like low-key. They're great. Some of them are great. But if it's, like, knowing how hard you try on it that makes me be like, ooh, was that six hours? Did six hours go into this? Mm. Did six hours go into those? Which one? The dancing one? No, no. The Riley one was on my camera roll. Right. It happened in seconds. Yeah. The one, the one, the Meghan Markle one. The I'm a diva one, yeah. Yeah, that was pretty great. Yeah, I don't care six, how it if it flops hours, or does though? great. Well, Shane made the sound uh-huh. because did you? He, and I don't like you have to know the origin. Like you know, Meghan Markle has a podcast. Who's right? Meghan Markle? Oh please! <laughs> 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 and Mar- Mariah Carey was on her podcast, no. and Mariah Carey called her a diva. Mariah Carey called Meghan Markle a diva. Yeah, and Meghan was denying it, and then she does like a wrap up after Mariah's gone, and she's like, everything was going seemingly well until she called me a diva and she's like it stopped me in my tracks and it's like what megan like what (laughs) what the fuck also we need to reclaim the word diva a diva is just a a top of the fucking line operatic singer we gotta stop with this negative connotation of the word diva that's a woman who's at the top of her fucking game and that's chill okay so eat my diva ass well follow me on tiktok at riley (laughs) adams
<laughs> Still think I hate it. Do you think it's like, uh, I've seen some reels that mm-hmm. are from TikTok that say TikTok's going to take over all of media. Yeah. No way. I think all social media dies at some point. I've already heard about new things that I can't remember the name of that I just, I can't invest like in. Like everyone at one point was saying I'm, YouTube's the future. Yeah. And then streaming came along and streaming is what kind of took down everything yeah. else. So it was like a different iteration. Everything of- dies. Everything has a life cycle and everything dies. It's a constant ebb and flow. And quite frankly, like I don't love social media. Like I do enjoy vlogging. Mm-hmm. But I don't really like interacting on YouTube, on Instagram or TikTok. Well, and that's, I think, my problem. I think as a consumer, I love consuming YouTube. I love getting my lunch, sitting down, Mm -hmm. watching somebody vlog. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine, like, sitting down and scrolling while I'm eating food. I know people do it. Yeah. And maybe... My theory was that initially, maybe like parents have the television set, so it's easier for a kid to just scroll on TikTok. Mm -hmm. But I think it's all ages that are watching TikTok. Yeah, I think it's all ages. I also like feel like, you know, that movie Ready, that, yeah, Ready Player One? Probably not. Everybody, it's in in that society, everybody lives in a virtual reality. Okay. Everything's a virtual exchange. All your friends are online. You wear a headset. You're in, you know, but fuck nowhere just living this fake life online mm-hmm. and i don't like that mm-hmm. i like being in person i like being outside even though it's 115 degrees like <laughs> i like i like personal exchanges that are real you know what i mean like i'd rather meet up with the homies <sighs> than like meet up with the homies so that we can take pictures and post them on instagram like right. i don't like that yeah so i specifically don't like tiktok which even though tiktok is a little bit different from that it's kind of not well you're I mean, the number one consumer in my life of yeah. TikTok. Yeah. So you're guilty. Well, you watch me do it to zone out. Right. That's literally, you. my whole body shuts down. And that's your preferred choice over television, over well, YouTube. Well, it's like over... when the Kardashians aren't airing, or if I've already seen the Kardashians episode <laughs> and I need to meditate and leave my body for a minute. You know what I mean? Okay. It's a disassociative <laughs> state that I enter. Right. It's great for pooping. Okay. Well, let's move on to your life. Why? Why not? Because <laughs> I need a break from it. <laughs> That's why. Well, you didn't seem interested in my stories. I was. It's just, you no. know, you've been, you had this love affair tape. with TikTok. Is like you come back and you're like, I'm dating that guy again. I think I still hate it. I think it's Yeah, still... and that's usually what happens with the guys, too. <laughs> okay. <laughs> it's the same cycle. Do I have lipstick on my teeth? No. Oh, you're just staring at them and I feel like you're about to hit me with an aggressive lipstick crazy i don't like that all right you were bullied at the nail salon i was bullied at the nail salon tell me about it well i went to a nail salon that i usually go to but i had a technician that i usually don't it's my (laughs) friend's wedding on friday this friday saturday yeah whoa i'm going to washington on friday whoa yeah i have to take a fucking plane and then i have to take a shuttle and then i have to take a boat and then i have to take another shuttle Mm, sounds like a nightmare it's a lot it's gonna be a lot but i think it's gonna be really fun i've never been camping and this feels like camping adjacent it's a camping wedding no but it feels camping adjacent (sighs) like i'm staying in a historical house okay i think it's camping adjacent there'll be s'mores all right whatever it's gonna be fun as fuck i think i've never been i'm going to an island in washington like what the fuck anyways what was i talking about oh (laughs) So we go to get our nails done at this place. And like, quite frankly, there's a reason why I go to San Diego to get my nails done. Mm -hmm. It's better fucking service. Better prices. Better prices. I have a relationship with the nail technician. Like, I care about her. She cares about me. Anyways. Does she care about you? She does. Okay. She does. I'm just curious. In jobs like that, how much is going along to getting along? Oh, I was invited to her baby gender reveal. Whoa. Yeah, we're friends. Anyways. (laughs) At this other place, at this godforsaken place that shall go unnamed because I'm going to continue to have to go as long as I can't, I don't have the time to go to San Diego. Um, they charge you up the ass and they are, they hate you. <laughs> and I'm so confused why they hate me. Like I tip really well because I feel like, you know, we're here, you're doing, a, we're spending a lot of time with me. Uh, this salon takes a cut of what I'm paying. I feel like they're in LA. They're probably used to the girlies putting in their AirPods and just zoning out. Yeah, and that's fine, because, like, I'll do the same, but it's like, why Why do you have to hate me? What do you mean? Like, define... How- well, first I'll be like, oh, can I have it shorter? They go, no. If you want it shorter, I can't do this design. And it's like, I'm showing them a design of a nail that's very short. 
It's confusing. You know what I mean? It's like gaslighting and confusing. And I go, okay. Um, well, did you show them the inspiration prior to sitting down? Yes. Like, and I mean, because I understand, like, if it's art and you're working with a smaller surface area, it's yeah. harder to accomplish the art. But it's not a smaller surface area. That's and the is thing. this the art? This is not. This is not what I asked for at all. This is the <laughs> Haley Bieber glazed donut, and it is not what I asked for. But it is what I had to leave with after. I Because it's like, I want to be an advocate for people who get their nails done to be like, don't accept anything less than what you ask for. Mm. But it's also like you have to gauge the capability of the artist that's doing it. And sometimes it's not there. So I go in with a very simple design. I wanted the glitter star that's just, you know, it's two lines intersecting, basically. Okay. It's like a cross. And then I wanted a gem in the middle. So first she starts gas gaslighting me saying, we don't have colored gems. And then she pulls out fucking colored gems. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, it's confusing, whatever. <laughs> And then she goes, all right. Um, and I know they have all of the gold dust because I've had the gold dust from them before. Right. And they have samples of it. Like I'm seeing a bitch sitting next to me getting the gold dust. I go, and she pulls out just a regular gold glitter thing to do this. I'll show you the design because it's cute and it's simple. Well, I'm show not being psychotic. Them too. Well, no, just send it to me later. Okay. Are you sure? Because you, we don't want to do assets today. <laughs> We're turning this around. Should I just pull it up? <laughs> Basically, it's a simple design. She's like, I can't do the gold. I can't do the gold powder over it. And I go you can't and she's like no i can't i do this i'm gonna do this instead and i'm just like well, i don't want that instead. i don't want to pay for that yeah instead. I'm, bitch i'm spending 120 fucking dollars on these nails i don't want what the fuck you're pressing on me instead see and I, she puts it she goes i show you she does shows me and i go yeah i don't want that and then she's like well then i'll take it off i was like girl i told you i didn't want it before you put it on but I'm just sitting there fucking terrified because I also know if I leave right now, I have a half set of sticky fucking nails on. What am I going to do with that? I can't even put my hair up. It's hot. So I'm just sitting there nicely like, oh, yeah, no, I still don't fucking want that. You crazy bitch. And she's also looks crazy behind the eyes. Like there's craziness back there. And she has these nuts <laughs> overfilled lips that are like basically bruised from so much filler that don't move and she has these gnarly fake like teeth in her mouth that uh -huh. are like the veneers that are bad and she's like you don't want that and i was like no I, I do fucking want that that's why i keep fucking asking for it and then she goes no and i'm just like all right i'll just go fuck myself do whatever you can do just to make this over you know what i mean i didn't say any of that i'm being very polite the whole time i'm like okay yeah so like no and then she goes you want me to put gold dust all over and i was like not really see but this is a learning lesson to never let it happen again well usually communicate here's the deal up front. i did communicate up front i was being a normal person the no, entire I'm just, time I'm not I'm, mad at you, you don't understand the situation you're held at gunpoint by these women when they have their hand in their fucking hands it's nuts. I'm not the only one who feels this way either. Women across the country are fucking terrified to tell their nail technician I that they hate their nails. I have a Karen story about furniture delivery, so I get it. It's similar this in the same regard. This is not a Karen story. At this, in the same day, my friend fucking Cynthia texts me a horrible picture of her nails. She goes, Lizzie, I got in the car and I started crying. And my husband said I needed to go back in there and tell them to fix it. And I was like, I would never. She's like, I did because he told me to. And I was like, well, good for you because your shit was more fucked up than mine. But it was gnarly. It was gnarly. And this is because I usually go to this woman there who's great. She's like a like a fucking 3D printer for nails. Like you show her something and she makes it happen. But I booked the bride's nail appointment with her so that she could have the good girl because um. it's her wedding day. And I'm a selfless, caring individual. Anyways. Did you go up to that woman and say, look what happens when no, I don't get you? No, guess how fucked this is. We get in there and they go, you guys can't sit together if you want to see like the girl that I signed her up with. And Shannon goes, oh, well, then I'll just sit in here. And I looked at Shannon and I'm like, you don't know what you're doing right now. Like, go see the other woman. Do not sit here with me. But she wound up getting a good guy who did like an airbrush or whatever, which was fine. So then like, at that point, you should have pivoted and gone to your lady. I thought about it, but I was already like, be this woman like held my hand like this, <laughs> literally like this. And honestly hurt me multiple times. I was like, ow, dude, what the fuck? She's like, oh. So what's the Literally, take I said no. ow, and she goes, oh. This can happen. I will not be seeing her. I will only be seeing the one woman I always see. Fuck your weddings, bitches. I'm not booking you with my chick if I'm going with you to get your nails done. We're done with that. So go to somebody that has been recommended or that you like. But I don't, yeah. that, like, there's, I've had similar situations with haircuts where yeah. I feel like I'm locked in a chair at the mercy of the person yeah. that's doing the work. And, and I've crazy. already tried to explain what I want, but it's going wrong. But how do we better navigate those scenarios? Well, here's, I'm always like, I'm like, be kind. Show them a fucking picture. 
clearly articulate what it is you want in simple terms. I do that every fucking time. <laughs> this woman, crazy. Crazy. And these were the lips. Crazy. It was nuts, dude. It was nuts. She was so mad. Literally kept yanking. Yanking. You know, and I kept being like, ha ha. I was like, I'll do whatever you tell me, lady. Like, please be nice to me. It was nuts. And then the girl who runs the place had to keep coming over and talking to her. She's like, am I in trouble? And it's like, if you have to ask in front of me while you're abusing me and your boss comes over to ask you to please chill the fuck out if you're in trouble, you're probably in Why fucking Why didn't you flag trouble. down the boss and say, could you finish this job? Honestly, I'm at the brink of like outing the salon because it's so fucking, <laughs> it's wild, bro. Like I'll wait there for three hours for an appointment that I made two days prior. You know what I mean? Oh, well, it must be in Studio City. It definitely is. All right. Well, uh, I don't know. Should we get into you fainting on a... Uh, first date or, or well, should, that's connected uh, to how embarrassed i am right now about all the mistakes i've made lately today's podcast is sponsored by honey the easy way to save when shopping on your iphone or computer thanks to honey manually searching for coupon codes is a thing of the past honey is a free online shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best one it finds to your cart at checkout imagine you're shopping on one of your favorite sites and when you go to check out the honey button appears and all you have to do is click apply coupons you wait a few seconds as honey searches for coupons and you'll watch as the prices drop recently i've been making over our barn apartment unit and I was shopping for accessories and fake plants, I spent $52 and on that I saved $8 just for having Honey installed. Honey doesn't just work on your desktop, it works on your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on savings and by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a solid while also supporting this show. We'd never recommend something we don't use, so get Honey for free at joinhoney.com sip. That's joinhoney.com sip. Today's podcast is supported by Native. You've heard us talk about how much we love Native. The thoughtful formulation behind all their products is something that we have always loved because they understand it's not just what's on the inside that counts, but also the outside. That's why Native is releasing their deodorant that we know and love in new and improved plastic-free packaging. Native is doing their part to help our earth with their new 100% plastic-free and recyclable packaging. When you buy Native's new plastic-free recyclable packaged deodorant, you're saving 37 grams of plastic. Native is also a proud partner of 1% for for the planet and are committing 1% of their plastic-free deodorant cells to environmental nonprofits. Just like all of Native's deodorants, their plastic-free deodorant is aluminum and paraben-free, kills odor-causing bacteria, and has 24-hour odor protection to keep you feeling and smelling fresh. With Native, choose from 10 scents, including their classic coconut and vanilla, sensitive formulas that are formulated without baking soda, and even unscented. I love using my Native deodorant because it smells delicious and it also has me feeling good while I feel environmentally conscious. If you're ready to try plastic-free deodorant, go to nativedeo.com slash sip or use promo code sip at checkout and get 20% off your first order. That's nativedeo.com slash sip. Use promo code sip. What? Well, that CV, I made a cover letter to try and get work. Oh. And on the cover letter, I sent it to someone because I need letters of recommendation right now because I'm also applying to this program. So I'm applying to this program. This woman's like, let me know when you're finished applying and I'll tell them that your application's coming. I'm like, fuck yeah. So that's sick. Thank you. I never get into these things. <laughs> People fucking hate me. I don't know what it is. People see me and they're like, fuck her. Tear that application up. And it's like, all right, man, I'm just doing my best out here. Anyways, I send her my cover letter because I'm like, just so you know what I've been up to lately, just read my cover letter because it's current on everything. And in the cover letter, it says, I have 187 followers on my podcast <laughs> just 187 and then at the end of it it's like and now i'm running a christmas movie to like you know for that audience because it feels like a smart thing to do and it's just like for 187 people like i just look like such a fucking dumb bitch and has this been like i sent wide? this to so many people so get okay on monday so you have one true friend dude one well what yeah literally rob is my only fucking friend rob watsky at the turbine art collective if you can support rob watsky in any way please do it because he's the best man i've ever known i wish i named my dog rob i really do i think about that a lot by the way <laughs> i look at my little frenchie and i think we should have named him Rod Watsky. Anyways, I have this. I'm, I'm, You're so defeated today. I'm having a rough one. Listen to this. This okay. is so fucked up. So I've been trying to network like a crazy person because I need like a fucking job. And what job are you looking for? First of all, I'm looking for representation as a writer and director because everything I've ever gotten done, I've done without 
an agent. Mm-hmm. No one will represent me. Everyone <laughs> fucking hates Sorry, me. I don't mean no, it's, it's hard like, out there. No, you're it's represented really as an actor, and you don't even fucking act. I, I write had... all day, every day, and nobody wants to fucking represent me. You know, I haven't had an audition in a long time. I sold a show to CBS, and the girl who orchestrated that deal won't even read me. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Anyways. <sighs> So I I reach I'm re- coming, I'm reaching girl. out I'm reaching out to people saying please fucking help me I could cry right now I'm like help me help me they're like what's up like why don't you ask me this like I've asked those people for help and they've told me to go fuck myself so I one woman sets me up with this other woman and I you as you know if you've listened to the podcast I have vasa veso I don't know how to say it oh the fainting thing the fainting thing right. And it it happens like every four years. And I had a really strong coffee that morning that was so strong that like the second I had it, I was like, Is this this why you're in Green (laughs) Dina? Yes. Is this why you're traveling with your matcha? (laughs) Yeah, I'm off coffee because I can't keep doing this to myself. So I'm like, I feel like I've done like methamphetamine. I'm on my way to meet this bitch. It's fucking 930 in the morning. I'm in Toluca Lake trying to act like I'm a cool person. I'm also trying to go off gluten because I'm tired of farting in public. So I'm in. I I sit down to talk to this woman, and out of the blue, <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, I'm gonna fucking faint right now." I don't know her. I don't know this woman. The only thing I've said at this meeting too is how how hard I've been stalking her on the internet. I'm talk. I'm literally like, "Yeah, I know everything about you from your son's birthday to your husband's job to how you got into this industry. I've seen all your short films. I'm a big fucking fan of yours, and I'm on coffee." Who got you this meeting? Another woman I barely know. She's like, oh, this other woman. So like, how do you know Jody? And I was like, oh, I don't. <laughs> She's a stranger too. You're sitting across from a super caffeinated stranger who then literally, when I start to faint, all the blood leaves my face and I turn gray. And I'm not exaggerating. I turn fucking gray. I hate to do this to you, but we've run out of space. <laughs> I'm just going to fuck myself. I'm going back to Burbank. Enough is enough. I'm done. One take two. <laughs> okay i don't want to interrupt your story but i do want to say a lot of people are like if you're always running out of space why don't you just get a bigger memory card i have had fuck-ups in the past where i just run out of memory uh-huh. but we do also have to stop every 30 minutes because the camera only allows a 30 minute record time just yeah. wanted to clear the air it's, he's not a monster you guys he's just dealing with what the lord gave him <laughs> anyways she turns I, gray i turn gray my pupils fucking dilate so i really look like i'm on meth <laughs> and I'm just sitting there like shit, shit, shit. I can't tell this woman I'm gonna faint. So, I, so I just uncrossed my legs, and like my Botox lady was like, "If you just press your legs into the ground, sometimes you can stop it from happening." So I'm just sitting there, pressing my legs into the ground, sitting across from this woman. I'm gray in the face with people smiling, <laughs> and I'm just going like this, and I'm like quiet. And then I just start putting my hair up, just trying to get air on my neck. And I'm just sitting there like this, like actively listening. <laughs> it's like. And then I was like, wait, this is because my blood pressure drops. Maybe I need to put something in my body to make my blood pressure go up. So then I just start shoving muffins in my mouth like I've never eaten a muffin in my entire fucking life. And it's like all bad. And then I'm like, wait, maybe I'm out of the woods. I take a deep breath. I go, <laughs> I go it's not happening today. Not today. Not today. Not in front of Katie. And so I don't faint. And I'm like, okay, I can talk again. I can talk to her again. I start talking instantly. Oh my god, I see stars. Tunnel vision closes in. Sound dissipates. I'm like, why? Why? I put my hair back down. I put it back up. Like, I'm just pressing down again. (laughs) Why don't you communicate to her? Because I don't know her. And it's psychotic. (laughs) this is fair. (laughs) I had decided if I was any closer to fainting, I was going to tell her I was pregnant. (laughs) Because everybody has sympathy for a pregnant bitch. (laughs) <laughs> and I was panicking and then I was like but if I tell her I'm pregnant I'm gonna have to tell her I miscarried if this relationship persists <laughs> but no matter what like it wasn't the time to tell a stranger I have a fainting syndrome I'm like I want to direct I want to command a crew and a cast and I'm just sitting there like <laughs> you know what I mean like just trying to be okay so she never responded to my follow up email oh also sent her that cover letter that says I have 187 subscribers that I think want to see a Christmas movie so bad I'm going to make it. She probably called the lady I that set up the meeting and, and cussed like, her out on the way you, home. Fuck you, Jody. What the hell? That bitch is on drugs. So now not only have you ruined your relationship with Katie, you've ruined your relationship with Jody who set up the meeting and they it's all weird. think it's, you're bonkers. It's weird that no one wants to represent me, but you guys, <laughs> it's because I'm fucking desperate. You see, should see me in my element though. I shine. I fucking shine. And then I had a meeting with one of my DPs that I love. He does a lot of like high end commercials. Mm-hmm. 
He works with a lot of production companies who are constantly asking for female directors. And so he said, let's shoot a spec commercial and then I can show them your work to them that I shot. Right. And we can both benefit from that. And I was like, oh, great. Love that. At that meeting, now I'm triggered by breakfasts. I got so <laughs> nervous sitting down at that breakfast. I was like, fuck, I'm going to pass out. But I know that guy so well that I was like, Matt, I'm going to faint. <laughs> See, isn't this the problem? Like, we can be great. Yeah. Like we are great. And that's the thing. But trying to sell yourself to somebody who doesn't already know your greatness. Yeah. It's nearly impossible. And it's that's just so exhausting. I've prayed multiple times. I'm like, why can't there just be like a manager that has seen me yeah. and appreciates me yeah. and wants to go to, to bat for me? Dude, because I don't even need you to go to bat for me. I just need you to set up a plate for me to stand over and bat at. Do you know no, what I'm saying? Like I vote because uh, like obviously my dream has always been to get into hosting on a larger scale. Like I I don't know if I'll I'll always vlog here and there because I I love it so much. But like eventually I want to have an hour long morning show. Like yeah. hello Ryan and With Kelly. Me. Yeah, why not? <laughs> Please why but not that, include me? I'm part of the deal. I need a job. What did I just tell you? <laughs> I'm pregnant. But the problem is, like, I'll go on IMDb and I'll search for hours all of these people's managers. But it's like, how am I ever going to A, get their attention and then B, make them a fan yeah. enough to want to? Because really, I don't think like an agent's different. An agent's just trying to get you cash for booking yeah. jobs. But yeah. a manager wants to, like, break down doors for you to make jobs happen yeah. for you or sell jobs with you. And, like, you can't do that unless the person fully is also in line or appreciates your work and, like, and that's to you with writing as well yeah here's the deal potential managers all <laughs> i want to do is make We're money for you <laughs> i want to make you fucking money dude there's nothing else i can do in this life i am unfucking employable in any other field i am hyper creative and a low-key nightmare but i can keep it together for 12 hours on a set please god help me <laughs> I'm crying. Well, I guess I should tell you about my embarrass. No, I, it wasn't an embarrassing you shit your situation. Pants. If you didn't shit your pants, it's not worth sharing. I didn't shit my the pants. The first time I fainted, I told everyone that this kid shit his pants so that they would be more concerned about him shitting his pants than me fainting. So you did make it. like you. Oh, you, I made it. I pulled through. You, oh, at the end of the meeting, she like stood up and was like ready for a hug. And I knew if I stood up, I was going to faint. So I just looked at her. I said, have a good day. <laughs> I said, you go have you have a good day now. <laughs> Who paid for this lunch? It wasn't even a lunch. It was a coffee. I tried to buy her coffee too, because that's like part of it. I'm like, you guys, I'm rich as fuck. Let me buy you a coffee. <laughs> Pick your brain. <sighs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, here's to hoping for a better Q4. <laughs> the fact that we're already in Q4 makes me sicker. <laughs> What's your embarrassing story? I can't even story? tell if it's winter yet. Like, or fall. Is it I fall? Know. No, who knows. <laughs> We're definitely in Q4, right? No, I, Q3. We're in Q3. Here's Are the, the Q's for three us. months? I don't know. What, it, whatever yes, 12 the divided three, by four would three be. Months. Okay. We could be in Q3. <laughs> <Stop>. <laughs> Should we ask Austin? <laughs> he had COVID. I know. What a loser. <laughs> <laughs> Literally so many. Did you wash your hands after the airport today? Of course today? I did. I'm not fucking Okay, crazy. because a lot of people, there's like four people in my life that have COVID, not that I've come in contact oh, with, who? but like. Name names. Mm, and like, give me uh, addresses. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I was mortified the other day because I think I'm a very clean person. Mm -hmm. Like I shower a lot. Yeah. I, I just think like my hygienics are good. Yeah. And especially when I'm going to morning workout classes, I know that sometimes they're packed all the way full and you might be as close as we are to somebody else sweating your ass off. And so I'm always like really conscious of deodorant. I even like make sure my hair is decent half mm -hmm. the time. Mm -hmm. And I'm in this yoga class and a, I don't know if boys just sweat more than girls because like, or I also like work really hard in workout classes. Yeah. Like you can attest to this. Oh, we yeah, go to Orange crazy. Theory it's and I do give my all. Like I go. You burn the amount of calories a person consumes in a day. Which then also is the downfall because I can't consume enough calories. So then I'm in a calorie deficit and then I have a headache because of it. But that's Orange Theory. Yoga is a little bit different. And my problem is with this yoga class because I was in this packed class. It was tight and tiny. And by the end of the class, this woman next to me was covering her nostrils and putting the towel up her nose, acting as if I stunk. Are you sure that was about you? Who else would it be about? Did it smell in the room? Yes. Was it you? No. I did an <laughs> armpit check in the room when I glanced over and saw her putting her towel up her nose. And I was like... I'm so offended because I am sweating. Are you sure she thought it was you? I, who else? 
the person who probably actually stunk in the room. It feels personal when they're as close to you as they are to me. Well, it was and, there, was she? Was it just? Is it like? I mean, there's like, somebody on her other side as well. She, yeah, so she could have been upset about that guy. You might be reading into that. I don't know. It felt very targeted, mm-hmm. and then I also. I think I'm internalizing it more because I sweat like a crazy bitch. Yeah. Like the girls next to me, they're like lightly damp yeah. and I'm like dripping water and I'm gross to be next to because of that. Yeah. But I think it's because I go so hard and like it, if there's a posture, I'm going all the way in the posture. I'm Hell holding yeah. it as hard as I can. Hold so it as really, hard as you can. <sighs> whatever. All the way in the posture. I really I'm felt like she thought I smelled can. and I can't let go of it. I'm sorry that happened to you. Thank you. I just still feel like it's not that bad. <laughs> Oh, I have a question. Jesus, what's up? On my latest vlog where I'm designing the barn, Mm -hmm. everyone is saying this should be your star S-H-A-M star job. What? Oh, I thought you would know. I thought it was like TikTok lingo and you would know. What the fuck is... I was genuinely saving the question for you. Did you Google it? Sham No, I was asking you. Let's see what sham is. Your S-H-A-M. And they all have the stars on either side. What the fuck? Why didn't you look it up? Well, I thought you would know. I thought you were my all thing internet girl. No. (laughs) I'm nothing. I'm no one. What does it mean? Sham. I think it means just sham. Oh, okay. Today's podcast is sponsored by HelloFresh. With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients, and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. Getting back into the fall season can be busy, but weeknights can be made so much easier with foolproof step-by-step recipes that are ready in around 30 minutes or less. With Hello Custom, swap out one protein or side for another, upgrade to a more luxe experience, or even add a protein to a veggie meal. This means more choices, more variety, and more more meals truly tailored to you and your family. I also love working with Green Chef, who is now owned by HelloFresh, and with a wider array of meal plans to choose from, there's something for everyone. I personally love switching between the brands, and now all of you can enjoy both brands at a discount with me. I love having the comfortable filling of HelloFresh in my fridge because I know that after a jam-packed day, I can go and almost without thinking, have a wonderful tasty meal for me and my family. Go to hellofresh.com slash the sip 16 and use code the sip 16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. That's hellofresh.com slash the sip 16 and use code the sip 16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three gifts. Today's podcast is sponsored by ZocDoc. If your doctor can recite every line from their favorite movie, but can't remember your name, it's probably time to get a new doctor with ZocDoc. ZocDoc makes it easy to find a quality doctor in your network and your neighborhood. Plus with real verified patient reviews, you can find the right doctor for you or one that can actually remember your name. I love using ZocDoc and you should too. I have found so many quality doctors that are in my my network. On ZocDoc, you can find every specialist under the sun, whether you're trying to straighten those teeth, fix an achy back, get that mold checked out, or anything else, ZocDoc has you covered. ZocDoc's mobile app is as easy as ordering a ride to a restaurant or getting delivery to your house. Search, find, and book doctors with a few taps. Find and review local doctors, read verified patient reviews from real people who made real appointments, and now when you walk into the doctor's office, you're all set up to see someone in your network who gets you. Go to ZocDoc.com to find the doctor that is right for you, book an appointment in person, or remotely that works for your schedule. Every month, millions of people are using ZocDoc, and I happen to be one of them. Go to ZocDoc.com slash the sip and download the ZocDoc app for free, then start your search for a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C.com slash the sip. ZocDoc.com slash the sip. If you are under the age of 35 and know what sham, asterisk sham, asterisk means, please let us know. Okay. Well, that flopped. It's time to get into- Just like your TikTok. (laughs) I was ready. One went viral. I'm famous. Oh fuck! Like so, not people that are popping on TikTok are doing like (laughs) millions of views. Helen's like, we need to go to a drive-through right now so that I get recognized to feel better about myself. Um, which I love for you. That isn't something I would never say on camera. No, (laughs) just kidding. I like don't like to go out. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm I'm hoaxing you. Okay publicly shaming that's not something me. what people say i'm blacked out now okay these are all um produced by lizzie by did the you way. read any of them yeah i clicked on the links some of them i care more than others dude speaking of sweating i'm so freaking hot right now and i'm dripping take it off i can't i'm not wearing a shirt there's not a bra no i mean also like look at this i'm not trying to put that on camera you know what i'm saying 
Okay. It's a, it's a bloat thing. So Leonardo DiCaprio <laughs> dumped another girl after she turned 25. So is this a recurring theme? Yeah. <laughs> this is a recurring theme. So 25 is... No, but like 20, how... No, 25 is his cutoff. People are making graphs and shit. Of course she doesn't have one pulled up. I know. I'm so sorry. So they have, I was up at 540, <laughs> driving, 510 to get here. A scooter into the airport. <laughs> scooter into the airport. <laughs> <laughs> so how many girlfriends has he had that were dumped at the brisk age of 25? I think it's like all of them. Okay, here's the graph. You're kidding me. Look. Oh my God. One, two, three, four women have made it Wait, to 25. Wait, how many girlfriends has he had? A fuck ton. That dude. Oh, this shows the brackets of when they started date. Wow, so he does long-term re- relationships with these but women. But he cuts it off at 25. Can't get too close. You know what I'm saying? And, well, so, what are your thoughts? Um, I was just wondering if you had any favorite meme from it. I haven't. I didn't even know this was uh, happening. Oh. You said there were favorite memes, but I there was not a link to any memes. Oh, I just assumed you'd seen them. Where? Because they're just all over. W- define all, all over. Well, mostly Instagram. Oh, yeah are you liking reels yet no i i will say i also dabbled here's my problem with shorts tiktoks reels i feel like everything i know doesn't apply because i posted a short on youtube and they didn't put it out to the subscribers over in 24 hours it got less interaction less views than i get interaction like on a community post so i just i, I can't fathom the it's world crazy. <laughs> she doesn't care <laughs> okay so what where's your no, meme? i mean if you don't care where's your meme no oh, tell me. you took five hours to pull it up i was trying to tell a story while you were pulling it up so that it wasn't dead silent oh in i was here. trying to listen to you no oh. um nothing nothing okay so great i just that graph killed me another one bites the dust another one bites the dust and who was it this time who even knows <laughs> you know what i mean this is great for her though she's all over the daily mail if she's trying to push something now's the time okay and uh you know <laughs> <laughs> Lizzie, we're turning around this podcast for tomorrow. I'm just at the dead air laughing. is too much. Anyways, good thing you clapped through it so that it would stay alive. <laughs> Leah, Mis- <laughs> Leah Michelle said she wrote. Okay. <laughs> so this is in continuation of the funny girl drama that you don't give a rat's ass about. Okay. Leah Michelle did an interview with people about taking over Beanie Feldstein's role as the funny girl in Funny Girl. Okay. And is the funny girl, it's not Barbara Streisand originally yes. had the role? Well, Barbara Streisand had it before, after another bitch had it, but I don't know any of these people. Okay. I read the article, so yeah. I tried to get up and up on the tea. But the funny thing is, is the amount of times that Leah Mich- Michelle claims that she wrote a letter to Beanie Feldstein, considering everybody in the world believes that Leah Michelle is illiterate. What? <laughs> what? How did you not know that people think that Leah Michelle is literate? I did not know that. Oh yeah, there's an ongoing joke that Leah Michelle doesn't know how to read. If I could write. sing and act like Leah Michelle, I'd let all of you joke about how I can't read or write. Who cares? Right. right. Well, it felt like she cares because in the amount of time she was like, <laughs> I wrote, I saw the play, and then I wrote. I personally picked up a pen and wrote letters on a page that equal <laughs> into words. So to Beanie <clears throat> Feldstein. And was this damage control? Because how did the shift of role go? Like who was, was fired and was who a, was replaced? Uh, it was a big. It was a big flop for Beanie. It was a big. Speaking of flops, Beanie flopped. Beanie's flop went viral on TikTok. That's people how were floppy she it? was. No, it was more like it was like people with the news articles. So Beanie fancy and got fired. Well, and if you can see from this article here on their green right, screen, this is why was, I hate TikTok. It was, but it was deeper than that. So everybody like Leah Michelle was the girl for funny girl. She's always talked about wanting this role. So why would they she, give it to somebody else to begin with? The, well, that's that's where the drama originates. They gave it to Beanie, Beanie Feldstein and then Seth Beanie, Rogen's sister. No, a different guy that also looks like someone. <laughs> Tell me who Jonah Hill. Yes. Jonah Hill's sister. Jonah Hill's sister. Got it. Thanks. Good, good guess, though. We can move on. Because I didn't have the answer after. <laughs> she was in that show. Mm, what show? Some Ryan Murphy show. Okay. And Peach. Mm. Leah Michelle. Yes. They were both Ryan Murphy girls. Oh! Oh, my God. Oh, my gosh. Do you think <laughs> Ryan did the connect for Leah to get her email? Ryan just fucking <laughs> bored. So he's just caused all this drama. He's like, you could hire Le- Ma- Leah Michelle first, or you could hire Beanie Feldstein and then make double the sales. And then Leah's like, hey, Rye, how do I get a hold of Bean? E. Anyways. Feldstein. Anyways. Okay. Uh-huh. Anyways. I'm on track. Beanie opens the show to cold reviews. <laughs> oh, no. Cold reviews. Oh. She didn't, it's a big role. It's their, their big shoes to fill, and she's got tiny feet, apparently. Anyways. 
Then Beanie d- set, announces she's going to leave the production early. And then she has to leave it er- even earlier because she gets sick and put on vocal rest. And then Jane Lynch cancels her position on the show with Beanie. And someone else replaces uh, her. And then they announce Leah Michelle is the new so do Funny you think girl. before they fired Beanie, they had Leah lined up or do you think they scrambled and got Leah last I can't tell if they minute? fired Beanie or if Beanie wanted out because it was not uh, it was not a comfortable place for her to be long term. And has Beanie responded to Leah's? Yes, they've all responded to it. It's just kind of weird that Leah's going public with having had reached out to Beanie. I guess maybe she was getting a lot of well, backlash she's... for taking the role. So this the bigger picture conversation that a lot of people are having in a lot of instances, including the fucking don't worry darling drama is the way that the media has always and will always pit women against each other Mm. because a female rivalry is something that is more you know support like the conflicts more supported Mm -hmm. in the mainstream than you know a, a friendship right and so leah michelle's whole thing was like enough with this beef like i don't have beef with beanie beanie doesn't have beef with me i wrote her a letter because i can read and write <laughs> and, <laughs> and why would leah turn it down you know like was if her dream it came job. to her why would she turn it, it down it was her dream like, job and at some point you just have to like i wouldn't be surprised if leah michelle had a voodoo doll and gave beanie <laughs> throat problems like i wouldn't be shocked about that but I'm not I'm not trying to perpetuate a female pitted against female narrative. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So speaking of uh, that movie, the Don't Worry Darling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What was your news regarding that? Did you read that one? Well, you started you sent me a TikTok mm-hmm. about Olivia wiling out in a car. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I don't understand. Okay. And then I went down a big rabbit hole because I was like, yes. she's talking about Shia. Who's Shia? I Shia thought she was with Harry. Yeah. So yes. So then I went down and I watched people talking about the drama on YouTube. Do you understand it? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so Shia was originally Harry. Right. But Shia couldn't get along with nipples. No. <laughs> I don't think that's the case. Shia didn't have time to rehearse adequately for the role, so he backed out. I thought out of it was it. beef with the Pew girl. No, he didn't. He Am I pitting the, women the, against each other again? No, no Shia is a man. <laughs> I know. I'm so uh, the Shia left the project, and mm. then Shia was canceled in public for being an awful, abusive From boyfriend. FTA, yeah, and when FTA. Shia was in public being called an awful abusive boyfriend being sued for emotional damages olivia wilde came out and said she had fired him because he was toxic on her set and she will not stand for such nonsense this is another layer so that's the bat that's the because then the video comes out where she's actually begging him to come back to and her calls picture florence miss Flo. what was that? which is demeaning as fuck i think I think it's a little demeaning. I think we're making a mountain out of a molehill. I think it's fucked up what she did to Shia LaBeouf, but I don't know what she did to Miss Flo Nipples, right. as you call her. <laughs> Probably more demeaning. Probably a lot more demeaning. Oh but, no, am I canceled on TikTok? But here we are. And then there's uh, more drama. So Olivia Wilde posts a picture of her at Video Village watching Florence work and says, this woman is a force of nature. Like, I'm so honored she's in my film, blah, blah, blah. And Florence does not acknowledge the post, does not like it, does not comment on it, does not reshare it. And is this because, is she in some sort of drama of her own or is it the they drama? They are asserting that there was, dr- that Olivia Wilde and Florence had bad blood on set. But I ha- but n- not, neither woman has confirmed it but florence just isn't promoting the film in any regard florence has promoted the film a little bit like maybe one time on instagram she promoted it and i know that she did an interview about it because they asked her about the sex scene and she's like the sex scenes because apparently the sex scenes are very steamy and florence said i don't think that this film should be reduced to the sex scenes it's so much bigger than that right florence is also shooting another film right now she's shooting dune which is probably very fucking consuming probably in some butt fuck nowhere but when you sign up for a movie 50% Fifty percent of the contract is the publicity surrounding the movie. Right. Because if you don't get anyone to see the movie, Publi- then- press has not started yet. Though. Okay. It's just so it premiered at the Venice Film Festival. And did she show up? She did. Oh, okay. But so she she's didn't doing. Make, her she didn't make the photo call because she was on set shooting Dune. Okay. Though she did come for the premiere and she did walk the carpet and the whole cast took a picture together. All right. So that's why I feel like some of this is like trumped up charges. And some of this I feel like is people reaching for things because I do feel as I'm watching TikTok, as I'm watching Snapchat. Snapchat. It's a lot of like, I need to grab your attention yeah. and I need to grab it fast and I need to give you facts so that you'll stay and I need to edit it hyper focused. So I feel like people probably are like pulling well, at nothing. It feels like they're definitely trying to vilify Olivia Wilde because like hella people are shitting on her. Right. And I just feel like 
you know, for so long, nobody shit on people who are fucking assholes. Like, well, you're going to shit on Olivia Wilde. And like, she better big, be a massive asshole. It's a big feat to get anything made in Hollywood. Yeah. The amount of people that you have to answer to, the amount of fires you have to put out daily, the amount of work you have to go through to even get it off the ground, let alone cast the project. Yeah. It's a never ending nightmare. And you have to be assertive to be able to get something done. So mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know Olivia Wilde, but I'm sure it was hard to get this off the ground. It's, yeah. And, you know, um, I feel like if Olivia Wilde, the type of woman who at the nail salon demands what she demands she probably wouldn't her, end up with this she wouldn't end up with the Haley bieber fucking well she might because people are saying her film is derivative and generic and she's ripped off other movies in a way that she doesn't understand well what was use. her last beanie feldstein's first movie and what was that called uh book smart it oh. was the female super bad and it did really well right yeah it was a vibe. And so you're saying this isn't getting great reviews though it's getting hot and cold reviews so florence is getting huge praise wow the movie itself got, I think, like a four minute standing ovation and uh, but it's getting mixed reviews. So a lot of people are saying that the script is convoluted in a bad way. The first comment I saw after I because I saw like Harry kissing a guy, I guess, when there was a standing ovation. And the very first comment was four minutes is nothing at Venice or whatever yeah. film festival. Well, I mean, was. Brendan Fraser got six minutes and started crying. OK. And, and who cares? Yeah, I mean, it's all like it, it's all it's all up for grabs. But I do struggle to believe that people are giving Olivia Wilde a fair review of her film because, because of, of how the much they fucking hate her. And I know that they hate her because that's the whispers all about town that she's a bitch. And it's just right. like, does it make me a bitch if I demand the gold glitter on my nail the way I want the gold glitter on my fucking nail? And Hollywood's hottest man, Harry Styles, doesn't help her reputation. Oh, he doesn't? Oh, I don't know. I'm saying I'm I mean, asking. Does yeah. that not like validate her in some sort of way because he's so beloved by everyone? Right. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just asking. I don't know. Um, Did you see that Harry Styles might have spit on Chris Pine when he went to sit down at the movie? That's another thing that people are speculating about. So Harry goes to sit down next to Chris Pine and like leans over and pauses. And then, like, people think he spit. I can't imagine. Because, when, well, it's a thing he does. Apparently, it's called wailing. He spits on stage or something. So then Harry Styles, like, goes back to his, like, natural posture. And Chris Pine looks down at his crotch and, like, kind of giggles. And, like, they kind of laugh with each other. So people think he might have spit on him. Huh. But there's some funny memes going on about that, too. Okay. Like, Joe Biden, what are you going to do about this assault against America? Like, Chris, <laughs> Harry Styles didn't just spit on Chris Pine. He spit on the entire country. <laughs> It's funny. It's funny I, stuff. I did see a clip of Harry going around in his performance. Yeah. And it looked like he was giving it. Uh, people are saying that he's neither here nor there. I mean, he looked here when I saw the clip. I mean, yeah. it was out of context, but yeah. he looked emotionally available and distraught. Jesus. Is that about, is that what we're going to call my autobiography emotionally available and distraught <laughs> if so i'm charging 10 percent. girl i'm like literally gonna cry right now thinking, what's going on i'm just thinking about the people who have that cover letter right now thinking <laughs> that i think it's a good idea to do something with the, you know what i mean like god woof, woof. <laughs> okay and do i email all the people who have not responded to my email from a week and a half ago that have the typo in it like oh my god i'm so sorry like here's the deal like i'm actually kind of a big deal my partner doesn't like when i talk about what a big deal i am but i didn't mean to downplay it on the cover letter like you know what i mean yeah. No, I leave it. Hey, be, just, right? to, just checking in. If the reason you're not replying is because I said I only have 187 <laughs> people who care about me, it's far more than that. This is why people hate me, <laughs> and it's because I'm insecure and fucking. I hate me too. Okay, we're we're gonna try to build you back up, but what's next? When are we gonna get there? <laughs> oh, here's another thing. <laughs> Thank God, something's happening. Okay, so do you know who Brooklyn Brooklyn Beckham is? I know who his parents are. Right, but who the fuck is he, dude? And who's this bitch he married? What's her name? Does anyone know her name? I saw that she's from Money Transformers. <laughs> okay, so but her family is rich too. Okay, because there's no way these 23 year olds are buying fucking multi million mansion dollar mansions. But it's like you you know they got married, right? Yes. So why do why do we know that? Well, why is why do we give a fuck? I didn't know that. What does Beckham I do? But what I did see is that the drama is surrounding her beef with his mom. Right, but like, and so that's why do when we it care? becomes mainstream drama because everyone cares like 
if in our hometown, if you knew about somebody who like had a huge falling out with their mother-in-law, you would talk about it. You talk about the girls from your hometown almost daily. I feel like the girls from my hometown, their drama is a lot more intriguing than my mother-in-law doesn't like me. And most people's mothers-in-laws don't like them. I happen to be lucky. My mother-in-law likes me a lot, though she does not respect my wishes and stop (laughs) watching this show. Get out of here, Marge. Mind your business. (laughs) Um, I'm just kidding, dude. I love you. It's like it is what it is. And um, <laughs> but who, I don't give a fuck about this. And so many people give a fuck about it. Seems like you put it on the document because you. No, give a I fuck put it. No, it. I put it on there because I'm sick of fucking seeing it in the news as if it's news that these two unemployed children who have millions of dollars have any kind of shit going on in their life that I should see in the Daily Mail every fucking day five times. I mean, who cares? The Daily Mail is based out of the UK. David Beckham's one of the UK's oh. biggest stars. And I do feel like scandal in a family. This is making a, a family, lot more sense now. Like, I'm personally not invested. Yeah. When I did see that I the drama so... I mean, from what they're saying, I'm sure it stems a lot further back than this, but they're saying Victoria Beckham was like a bridezilla for the bride and didn't like the bride's dress. And yeah. then there was like this huge beef between them. It was like almost enough for me to read the whole article. And then I got bored too. Yeah. I mean, when the wedding was going on, people were like, this is our Royal wedding. I was like, it's not, they're not even from here. <laughs> like what? But neither, are, neither would a Royal wedding. What? Do you know what I'm saying? Like no. the Royal wedding is also not. In That's the what USA. I'm saying. Cause they're in like, they're English citizens. Like they're not even American representatives, but, it's not our the Royal Beckhams wedding. are from the UK too. That's what I'm saying. We're saying the same thing. Okay. <laughs> what? We are. We are. Okay, I'm lost. <laughs> no, you're not. Anyways, I don't even know if I want to talk about that. Do you want me to not talk it up? I mean, if you want to talk about it, you can. I just I don't have anything productive to add. Go for it if you do. Well, do you have any thoughts on it? Uh, <laughs> the way we're teasing this topic, that- <laughs> that we're probably never going to bring up. <laughs> Not that are healthy for society. I wish it wouldn't be in at the forefront for all of us to dissect. I wish they would keep it to themselves, quite honestly. Should I say what it is? Go for it. Or should we just never say it? Is this a, we're I think like everyone edging, knows. We're edging with the audience. I, think everyone I don't think knows. they know. Okay. Well, How would they know? Let's talk about what we're watching for this 50 seconds <laughs> We're that not we going to tell them? No. Wow. Go for heavy. it. That's heavy. Well, we're going to no, have to start up again. Well, maybe we'll tell you next week. <laughs> Gotta come back. Old fucking news by next we're week. We're not going to talk about it next week. Never. We're going to know. But guess in the comment <laughs> section what you think we weren't going to talk about. I mean, they know. Prove it. All right, you guys. Thank you so much for watching and enjoying today's episode of The Sip. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you want to follow us on social media, we're at The Sip Official. We're also on there personally. Lizzie has a vlog channel. I have a vlog channel. It's a great good time. Uh, thank you for hanging out with us. We'll see you next week. We love you so much. Goodbye. And that's, and that's The, the Sip. sip. <sighs> Let's he, go get pickles. He did that. He really left no crumbs. Ah!